Josh Wooten can't breathe on his own. ER doctors think he is suffering from pneumonia, but leading pediatrician Dr. Chavez suspects something much worse. He's not behaving like your normal pneumonia child. This child was sicker than you expect. When Dr. Chavez studies x-rays of Josh's heart, he notices that it appears abnormally large. I need an echo down now. He thinks this could be a clue as to why Josh can't breathe. Josh's mother, Vanessa, and sister, Stephanie, finally arrive at the ER and meet up with his father, James. Having lost the ambulance that was rushing Josh to the hospital, they fear something terrible has happened. But they're in for a shock. So they show me which room to go to, and I run in there. And Josh is, is in there, and he looks like he's okay. Josh has been on a ventilator for 30 minutes now, and his condition has improved dramatically. He just looked tired. He looked like he was just fine, you know. He wasn't really looking that, that sick. It didn't seem like he was that bad off. I had a big sigh of relief. Oh, well, I found him every school in the hospital. They'll get him the, you know, the medicine or whatever it is that they need. And then we'll be able to, you know, go home soon. But Josh's healthy appearance may only be skin deep. An ultrasonic echocardiogram has scanned the inside of his body and provides an image of his heart. The scan proves that the heart's right chamber is abnormally large. This enlargement could be a sign that Josh's arteries are restricting blood flow, causing his heart to work extra hard pumping blood to his lungs. However, additional tests on Josh's blood vessels draw a blank. Dr. Chavez is forced to conclude that Josh was simply born with an enlarged heart. It certainly isn't the reason he can't breathe. The team is back to square one. It's not enough to spend a large child with that sick, but you have to keep looking until you find your own good diagnosis. Until Dr. Chavez can answer this mystery, Josh must remain at the hospital under close supervision. So people talk about Dr. not being emotional. I get very emotional with my patients and I'm very, very worried about the, the child at that time. And I, I try to convey that to the parents. When they said that they were going to admit him, James and I were pretty surprised about that because we didn't think that, you know, he had been nearly that sick to be having to stay in the hospital. The doctors kind of seemed like they weren't sure what it was that was causing him to be sick. We just don't know what's going on. We wanted answers and they don't know what's going on. They don't know what to do to help him. It was a scary thing. Without a proper diagnosis, Dr. Chavez fears that Josh's condition will worsen and orders him to be transferred to the critical care unit. In critical care, you are what we call a high risk to deteriorate or a high risk to go bad. Even if you're stable in quote unquote, we consider everyone in critical care at a high risk to go bad. There's little the family can do until more tests have been completed. But James is unwilling to leave Josh by himself in the hospital. James was married before, and his first wife was hit by a car. And she was literally brain dead, and they kept her body alive on machines for eight hours. That all happened while he was at work, and I think he was, you know, he felt more in control and he could be there with him. Over the next few hours, Josh's condition begins to deteriorate again. The low oxygen in his blood is making him agitated. He was starting to be in combat as drunk, was what the nurses were wanting to do. He was fighting, and that was starting to worry the nurses, and it was worrying me too. The doctors finally managed to sedate Josh, but they still don't know how to help him. I was getting frustrated with them at that time. I was going to get nothing other than that. They're ruling this out, they're ruling that out. And we couldn't find out anything. I'm seeing a child that is deteriorating. It's getting worse. So then that could mean many things. One could be that we're missing the boat. That there is something here that we're not recognizing. Then suddenly, Josh's condition takes a terrifying turn for the worse. I was standing outside the room with a nurse. And I kind of took a glimpse in the room. And I seen the doctor working on Josh. 
it looked like he was real intense on working on him with the ambu bag and I knew something was wrong, serious wrong. Is it a good time to be doing this? Call Code Blue. I'm sorry, I have to go. You see all these people running into the room. I was in shock. Uh, this oxygen is really low. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, his heart rate is still good. Yeah. His ultrasound. Third AV axis. 